Hello, hello. My name is Sophia and this is an audio version of my blog entry entitled How to geolocate a Twitter video using free OSIN tools and how relying on information from the news can set you back. Introduction. As the invasion of Ukraine by the Russian military unfolds, the world watches. Many of us want to do something, but what? Do we, as individuals, hold any power over a nation such as Russia? Yes, yes we do. A few years ago, I would have said no, but now, with examples like Elliot Higgins, the founder of Bellingcat, and many others that gather, analyze, and constantly verify data online, I say any of us can. At the moment, Twitter is flooded with the testimony of thousands, millions of Ukrainian people living through a quick and somewhat unexpected invasion of their homeland. Their images, videos, statements, etc. of the events. A huge crowd of OSINT and GeoInt experts and enthusiasts watches and tries to help in any way they can. Some are analyzing the rocket, some movements of troops, some the damage on Ukrainian soil, all for the same common goal, to end this madness. So first of all, general advice, I ask of anyone coming here to learn geolocation techniques to so please be careful, do not share any information that might endanger the safety of the person who did the recording, be careful of who you're sharing your findings with, and most of all, do not give away any important information to the invaders, avoiding anything that might make their life easier, such as current positions of troops and tanks, for example. Just be safe and be sensible, please. Okay, so the video. For this tutorial, I went to Twitter and found a video that had been posted early today, 25th February 2022. You can see the tweet below, archived here as well, just in case Twitter goes crazy. So the tweet said, I'm in the north of Kyiv, where Russia is continuing to bomb the neighborhoods. This is the bridge that Ukraine blew up today to prevent the advance of Russian tanks. You can see people fleeing the city on foot, scrambling over the ruins. I watched as a man dragged over his bicycle. So you can play the video, it's only a few seconds. You can see the bridge completely damaged, destroyed. Some people are crossing it on foot. You can see people on the side as well. There's some buildings in the distance. There's a river here, it pans out. You can see the railing. There's something going on there, some mountains, and that's it. It ends. That's, that's how much you get. So, download the video. First thing we need to do is to immediately download the video. This one has been viewed over 644,000 times by the time I wrote this blog entry and will probably not be deleted anytime soon, but in general, it's always best to save it just in case. In order to do that, I used Save Tweet Video which is an online Twitter video downloader. You copy paste the link of the video you found and select download. I mean, easy, super easy. Afterwards, you need to select the quality of the video. I selected the best one because any detail will help me. It will then open the video on a new tab and then you just need to save it using the save as option. It's fairly straightforward. Now that we have the video and it's not going anywhere, we can go back and read the caption, the comments, the hashtags, anything that could give us any hint on where to start looking. The author mentions that the video features a bridge that has been bombed in order to prevent the advance of Russian tanks. She also informed us that the video was recorded in the north of Kyiv. This is extremely helpful and it will probably not take too long to find it. We have to be aware, however, that sometimes the captions are missing, wrong or misleading in some way, sometimes on purpose and sometimes by accident. Save the frames. So let's be extra detailed and examine everything before drawing any conclusions. For that, we need to look at the video frame by frame. There are two ways to achieve this. You either use an online tool or you have one already installed in your computer. I will cover both techniques. And you know, just between me and you, you can just hold the button and very slowly move past the frames as well. Just make it lazy. Anyway, offline method FFmpeg. God knows how to pronounce that. So I've been using this one, a multimedia framework that supports Linux for quite some time. In general, I rather keep things offline if I can, especially if dealing with sensitive or confidential information. You can download the tool here, and here's the link. Once it's installed, you'll need to run a command to save all the frames of the video. My desktop is running Linux, so this is the command you would use. 
and that is it and you can see it also used here make sure you have created the new folder beforehand so that all the images stay together in one place so you can see here my folder is called bridge video it's extremely creative in case you're wondering this is the name of the software the dash i stands for input followed by the name of the video as it is on the folder then the img percentage 04d.png defines the naming protocol of the image so they'll start with emg followed by four digits it's, you can just increase you know if you have lots of frames but 9999 pictures is probably more than enough dot png so i want this to be saved as a png format the hide banner is just to hide unnecessary information while running the program so you can just skip that bit after running it we'll end up with 550 still images acquired from the frames of the video so you have so much so much data and then you have the online method with an easy gif if for some reason you cannot or you do not want to install the ff and peg on your machine you can just use an online tool for the same purpose i've chosen the easy gif an online video to jpeg image sequence converter the website is quite straightforward you select the video you download it and convert it to jpeg just like the image below so you put it there and then you can convert it by clicking the convert to jpeg easy enough after collecting all the still images, if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see the download frames a zip button. There you go. Save it to the computer and extract it to a folder. I was curious and decided to see how many images it had gathered compared to the FFmpeg. With only 184 items, totaling 9.1 megabytes, this is a huge difference from the previous technique, which gathered 550 photos, totaling over 929 megabytes. Wow, literally 10 times more in terms of used space and almost three times more saved images. You can guess which one had a better quality. Create a panoramic image view. Now it's a lengthy process of looking through the images and selecting a few that have the best chance of giving us useful information. So this is the ones that I have chosen. And yes, I looked at 550 images and I only picked five. <laughs> wow. We can put them all together to create a big panoramic view using Photopy, an online image editor similar to Photoshop, which I recommend. I absolutely love Photopy. So this is a panoramic. This is the end result using the five images above. And I have it here to show you. So you can see I tried to match the horizon. So you can see the bits here in the front. I don't really care because this is what matters the horizon look for landmarks with our panoramic view we can get a clear idea of the area we're looking for there is a small river that goes underneath the bridge there you go you can select that one on the right we can spot a corridor of purple street lights this one with some paved small lane i'll bring it there again so this is the one there on this section this is perhaps for pedestrians or small bike lane, although we cannot see any bike markings on the road with such indication. As we move closer to the street lights near the bridge, we can spot a small sculpture. It's so tiny there. There you go. Kind of looks like a paper boat origami. This one. And I will move it again. So there. This one here. Back again. The bridge itself has a pedestrianized area on each side, so you can see, there you go, with guardrails separating from the car lane. So you can see this one on the right and this one, people were crossing it on the left. The metal rails on the outside of the bridge are painted in yellow and blue colors, same as the Ukrainian flag, and the bars are horizontal. So the bars there that I'm talking about, this is just horizontal bars. All in all, it seems that this was a four-lane road with two lanes on each side, divided in the middle by another guardrail. Good. Looking the distance now, we can spot two big billboards closer to the bridge and several more in the far distance. Here you go, in a row. There are many different buildings in the distance. At this point, we don't know if they are part of Kyiv or if Kyiv is actually behind the photographer. We just know that the bridge leads to Kyiv. So focus on the details. 
With so much information, you think that it would have been extremely easy to find this bridge. You would be wrong. The problem when big events are unfolding is that the media coverage is so big and at such fast pace that quite often the amount of information will surpass the veracity of it. Images, videos and descriptions of events are dumped, many times copy-pasted from other sources, on a strange snowball effect. At some point, everyone knows about something that was simply not true. This is kinda what happened with this event. I started by just checking Google Maps around the northern area of Kyiv, simply looking for a bridge over a small river. I found a few bridges, but none of them matched. Then I turned to the news and searched for more information. I was pointed in all sorts of directions. There was a bridge in Crimea, a bridge in Ivan Kiev, over the river Tetarev, a bridge over the, the, the Dnieper River, and so on. At this point, we can conclude that the news coming through are not very reliable source of information, and we should just trust what we can see and investigate on our own. It's time to focus on the details of our video and frames. What does the billboard on the left seen in the picture below say? Will it be useful at all? I zoomed in as much as possible on it and focused on the writing on the red side of the big sign, so this one here. Using Google Translate, I managed to write down what I figured it says. What I got was this, which Google translated to Pucci. Probably not pronounced like that, but whatever. So I put Pucci on Google Maps and it was immediately taken to a town called Bucha, which we all know what happened there. I looked around using the aerial view, searching for a small river with a highway style bridge crossing it. I found one slightly south of the town. So you can still see the Google marking the town. So this section there belongs to this section there. And south of there, we found the bridge crossing a small river. Now it's time once again to drop to street view and check out the area in Google Maps. One thing I immediately noticed is that the image was captured in April 2018, almost four years ago. This means that there might be some differences in regards to structures like buildings that could have been developed in the last few years. At first glance, it seems that we have a match, but we still need to confirm all the landmarks before calling it a day. So we have the coordinates of the location of the image above, and this is it. Verify the claim. If we were just to state that this is the correct place without confirmation, we would have done exactly the same as most of the news outlets out there. We need data to prove our claim, so let's just get it. I decided to use a nice tool called Bird Hunt that can filter tweets based on coordinates, allowing us to geolocate photos and even users. Top result is shown below. It looks like the same bridge we saw in our original video, but now with some more photos. Interesting. But what about the images shared? These are the photos I got from the tweet above. So these photos are these photos, just a different layout. The most interesting by far is the middle one, where you can see the fire of the bridge explosion in the distance. So the bridge, which is here, was there, which means we're looking at it from quite a bit far away. From our original video, we can deduct that the photo was taken from the top of this building based on the angle and the distance. This gives us another dimension and even better proof that we are indeed in the correct place. So let's compare the image of the bridge after its destruction and the street view image. Okay, let me try to see if I can fit everything in. For the image at the top, this one, I have used Mapillary Street View Screen Grab as it was the most recent image of the area I could find. It was recorded in April 2019. We can see many similarities. The guardrail that separates the two lanes on the right to the pedestrian area. The horizontal metal fence with the top painted in blue and yellow. Look at that, same as well. In the distance, we can spot two big billboards and the similar street lights in a neat row. So you have the billboard, the billboard, and the street lights in a row. Same there, billboard, billboard in a row. At the bottom, we can also see the big power line and behind it in the distance, a group of probably residential buildings. So you can see power line and residential buildings and power line, residential buildings. We can even see how the hills in the distance match in terms of altitude and shape. So some things there and something there. 
Wish I hadn't used all red. Why all red? So useless. I wasn't done and decided to dig even deeper and use the words Pusha Arpin on YouTube. I ordered the results by date and found a video of cyclists going around the area on an almost two hour video. <laughs> I glanced at it and found two very interesting frames depicting something that I'm hoping you will recognize. And yes, I did watch a two hour video to find something useful. <laughs> Below you can see the purple, uh, blue, I don't even know what color that is. Street lights that we initially saw on our video, look at that, and panoramic image. Street lights, street lights. Path in the middle, path in the middle, lane, lane. Look at that. As I keep following the cyclist, I spot at the end of that path the paper boat sculpture in the middle of the grassy roundabout. So you can have it here. And there we go. Same sculpture. Look at that. Two hours not wasted. Satellite confirmation. Ideally, we would now have a satellite confirmation. A bridge being destroyed is definitely something that would be visible using current satellite image available. Unfortunately, at this point, all the images I have seen are covered in clouds and do not offer the possibility of confirming this is the exact location, although I'm very confident in my geolocation findings above. Within the next few days, we'll be able to recheck the satellite images and at some point there will be a visible image that will confirm this was indeed the exploded bridge. I'll be using Sentinel Hub EO browser, which I have covered in a previous blog entry. It's free, easy to use, and I can actually show you. Here we go. So we have Sentinel Hub EO browser. I have already input the coordinates and this is it. We are in the correct location and this is our bridge. We're going to search using Sentinel 2. It doesn't really matter which one we're going to pick because we're going to change the date anyway. So February 26 perhaps. It's going to be very blurry. I'll just tell you beforehand. This is going to be very poor quality, but we may be able to see something. So we're going to create a time lapse and I have already selected the dates. So I have picked between the 9th of February and the 3rd of March and cloud coverage at most 33%. That's good enough. And then I know it is very blurry, but you can see bridge, not bridge, bridge, not bridge. So we have the bridge on the 14th of February, not bridge on the 26th of February, which matches the dates that we had at first. So conclusion. With a constant stream of data dump during the ongoing Ukraine-Russia conflict, the viewers will be sometimes inadvertently fed incorrect information. If you want to know for sure where things are happening, you will probably have to do it yourself. This was a hopefully useful tutorial on how to go from a Twitter video with a claim to an actual verified information in a few short, they were not short, steps. I hope it was useful and you enjoyed the ride. Thank you for listening, Sophia.